Hey, aunties. This is Christina from Detroit. What's brewing today? So, South Korea. Tank takes two. No homo? And Curiosity Candy Edition. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Hey, ladies. How y'all doing? Hello, hello. 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 Hey, community. She's been drinking that tea over there. Girl. That's that Korean sake or something. <laughs> that soju. That soju. Mm. And per oh. usual, Dewan's traveling again this week. Where oh. in the world is it's Carmen, Carmen San Dewan? Diego? Oh, Carmen Dewan. No. <laughs> <laughs> she is coming from live and direct from Seoul, South Korea. So um Love this it. is yeah, this is um this is like a little bit of comb coming in a sense. My mom used to live here a, w- a way back. She lived here for about six, seven years. She taught English as a second language. So um, came out there to is visit her. Is she jealous her. that you're out there? Girl, she been hitting me up like all day, every day. Come, Did you meet my friend, this person? Did you meet my friend, this person? Did You should go to this neighborhood and eat this. Did you remember oh, 12 cute. years ago when you did this? <laughs> I'm like, Cheryl, settle down. That's no, my mama playing. too. Like every time I go to her, she's like, you know your cousin in this city. Oh, you guys and you know your cousin, your cousin Betty live in this one too. You know, your uncle Charles, cousin's daughter. I'm like, I don't I miss my I, uncle I don't Charles. Know these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like I, I say oh, that kind of disparagingly, but I, I love that she's like super excited that I'm here because I know that she yeah, really wishes that, yeah. that she was here visiting her old friends yeah. and whatnot. So I'm trying like I've been listening to a lot of the stuff that she's been like saying, like, go here and do this and do that. And so um I'm kind of like living it up for the both of us. Maybe you just you surprise your mom with that for her birthday next year. Ooh, there you go girl i got I'm, you mom we'll, i'm putting we'll out in the see. universe for you i'm looking out for you <laughs> <laughs> she and my stepdad are going to south africa in literally like next week so oh, they ain't hurting oh, for, like, oh, travel <laughs> that apple right. didn't fall far she from good. the tree <laughs> right she good. right now <laughs> we see each other <laughs> what's been your favorite thing you've eaten like is the food incredible i'm sure the food is oh. incredible the food is incredible. It really is. Um, so I'm here because Adam's, um, my partner, Adam, works for a Korean beauty brand and their home office is here. So he and some of his work crew are here on business. And I was like, bitch, you go into Korea, I'm going to Korea. So I just tagged along for the trip. And while they're out there working, I'm just like flitting around the city, taking snaps, taking mm. anything. But um Food, food, food. Last night, we went to this um, Korean place where Adam's boss um, recommended us, well, actually took us to, um, to, and it was a Korean barbecue. And it's not like barbecue with like sauces, like American barbecue, but it's just like meat cooked over like an open flame, like in the table. Right. Um, and they had this marinated pork, baby. When I tell you, like, I eat like a bird, like I eat very s- in small portions, but I eat a lot throughout the day. But I probably, like, I ate so much last night. It was so delicious. It was so tender. It was marinated. It was, and it had that charred flavor. You had, like, the bulgogi beef? Yes. Yes. But I didn't eat beef. I ate ate pork last night. It was so delicious. Okay. But, you know, I've been getting my dole cup, even Bob. I've been getting um, a little bit of street food in. Um, one of our one of the guys that's traveling with us, um, he had fish on a stick the first day he got there. He said, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> oh, he so said, uh-uh. <laughs> nah. Fuck my stomach all the way up. <laughs> I'm too much of a picky eater, so I haven't traveled much yet, as y'all know from last episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you didn't hear last episode, he thought London was in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my so god! I am, I'm a picky eater, so I'm afraid to travel too because I'm like, damn, I'm not probably gonna lose weight when I travel because I don't. <laughs> I like to stick to what I know, and if I can't say yeah. it, I don't eat it. You know, if I can't spell it, I don't eat it. So Corey will try anything. Yeah, like I feel like when like you anything when, when you travel, especially when you're traveling outside of the country. The whole point is to experience things that you never would have experienced in your own backyard. And like when you go from like, you know, the United States to Seoul, 
you know, you don't go to the Olive Garden. You don't go to like the Starbucks. You you go but because Says you can who? have that at home. I mean, listen, I, I I love the idea of having a backup plan. But like I encourage anybody, if you're traveling, no matter where you're going, get outside of your comfort zone and try something. You never you never know you might like it. It's true. That's all I know, true. All He's I know is I'm going to need mine. some samples. I'm going to need some samples before I order something because let me tell you, if He's I order something and I samples. don't like it, <laughs> I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be mad if I buy something and I'm like, uh uh-uh, this is nasty. I don't want this. Right. Yeah. You can't get it back. You can't get your money back. Right. So, That's the one thing Corey's like pushed me out of my comfort zone on, is especially when it comes to food, but especially mm-hmm. when it comes to things where I'm like, oh, I bought it. I want to eat it all, even if I don't like it. Him, he's just like, if you don't like it, get something else. Like, mm-hmm. enjoy the experience. And he's really got me on that mind frame because I was never like that. I'm the same way as you, or used to be similar to you in that regard, Jarrell. Like, I, I will I'll order something that I know I'll eat, but if someone yeah. orders something, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would like that. I will definitely ask to try that. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I like what they ordered. Next time I will order that too. I will add that mm. to my list. But I'm not going to spend my coins and take the risk <laughs> on, on starving. I'm a, I'm a big yeah. girl. I like to eat. And let me tell you, ain't nothing more upsetting than ordering something and not eating because you don't like it. Yeah. So two nope. tips. Two, two tips from a travel expert. Um, so-called travel expert. Uh, one. I was about to say, okay, <laughs> <do> travelocity. <laughs> right. <laughs> one, like if you ever have the opportunity to travel on someone else's dime. So, like if you're going on a work trip, if you're going on a business trip, and you're using like a corporate card, or you got or a sugar daddy, paying, or, or, or right, that is the perfect opportunity for people to try others. Even if you're traveling with your family and your parents are picking up the meal, like that's your opportunity to try something you never tried before because you're, you don't have anything to lose. Because a lot of people, that's just true. like what you said, Jarrell, a lot of people will tr- not uh, will avoid um, trying something because they don't want to waste their money. And it's not about the experience. It's like, if I buy this, I don't like it. Now I just lost, you know, $13. I lost $25. I lost whatever. And and I'm still hungry. So, like, mm-hmm. that's that's tra- travel trip num- tip number one. I'm going to need one of those tip- on retainer if you know somebody taking applications, <laughs> you know. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> travel tip number two. <laughs> Look, I'm taking notes. Okay, first of all, I'm taking we, need, we need a disclaimer. <laughs> first, we need we need a disclaimer for the community because we already started off when we connect. We had a whole conversation before Man, y'all we even we started had, this episode. I wish we were recorded because we were just going <laughs> in. Like, so you guys, that are in episode for a before the episode was lit. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all goes down. <laughs> goes down in the but, DMs. But what I what the, my travel trip number t- trip uh, tip number two is. When you are, especially when you're traveling to other countries, a lot of times the best way to kind of um, explore like different kinds of foods without losing out is eat appetizers. One, it's a smaller investment. So you're not spending like $25 for like one meal, but you can get like two different things, you know, for the same cost. And that way you're able or to do try street multiple- food too. Yep. Like a lot of the foreign places have like street culture, street food Absolutely. culture where you could get a, a like say if you're in Mexico get a taco for like a dollar or mm-hmm. a lot of the Asian uh, countries have street culture foods that are huge yeah, over like there the open market just a shit ton of food exactly the mm-hmm. markets over there oh man like we are, not we were watching one on Netflix the other night and Corey is just like oh I want to go back to Asia I want to eat I want to eat I want to mm-hmm. eat and he's all about eating like bird beaks and cockroaches <laughs> and like anything crazy <laughs> not that bird makes you uncomfortable Corey will try it and and it's I not to say that crunchy. he likes it all <laughs> but he he's like i like whatever he's like i like the slimy stuff i like the gristle stuff i'm like ooh, okay that's pushing me a little too far <laughs> look we don't need to know what's going but, on in y'all bedroom not at y'all married okay, huh? I'm, I'm, like, I'm like i'm like you nasty and he nasty i see it i see it it makes sense it makes sense yes. y'all just hey, both nasty that's my boo hey boo <laughs> <laughs> see they didn't got married now they letting all the secrets out huh. okay. exactly exactly <laughs> I like the secrets grizzle. all the way out there that's funny but no like Korea's definitely on my list I want to go to Korea so bad that's on my bucket list it's a blast um, Japan's on my bucket list everything like a lot of just the Asian cultures I have not been on that side of the world so and Corey's inching to go back because he used to go over there uh, quite a few times in the prior job he had so 
Yeah, it's it's great. Um, one of the things I absolutely love about um, Soul specifically is um, it's super clean, super, super clean. Like you don't see like trash on the streets at all. Like it's just it's super, super clean. Uh, it's super safe. They don't allow guns anywhere in the country except for and the military. And what else don't they allow? What did you say in the, the pre-show? Girl. What did you tell me? <laughs> So they're a very purist kind of country, um, wholesome, some would say. And um, girls, Auntie Chardonnay got blocked on the internet when she was trying to look at porn. Trying to look at porn. <laughs> oh. Oh. And y'all call me nasty. Don't... Okay, right. now. Well, don't let know, Auntie I mean, Chardonnay fool y'all. I had a little bit of extra time, so I was like, you know, what to do? <laughs> so I, you know, got the got the fingers twiddling on a computer, <laughs> and then and then I got a block, and I was like, oh dang, that's right, they outlaw pornography here. <laughs> I was like, damn, can't move here. Mm-hmm. Look, so you know you she said, that. so she's like, so I guess I gotta go to the hidden folder now. I guess. Oh. Right? <laughs> go from there. <laughs> He said, he said, fuck the police, fuck the police. Right. <laughs> Look, girl, that, that's what Tumblr and Twitter's for. <laughs> you can get your life on both of them apps. Twitter be all the way left. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Twitter girl, just nasty, to, and I'm here I for it. I have to change my settings. I have to change my, you know, there's that setting, that privacy setting, you know, so that videos <laughs> and things won't show automatically or start playing automatically mm-hmm. on Twitter. I have to turn that off. Uh-huh. So I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, oh, that's when you know you really want to look at some stuff, but you got to go dig through the settings. <laughs> She was really looking for some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yep, don't let Auntie Charnay fool y'all. Uh-uh. Don't play don't place that all on Auntie Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not I don't I, love it. I don't do Tumblr or Twitter, so I'm just over here. Out. <laughs> but at least at least you're in a country right now that allows pornography, so you true. can go and find it if you want it. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't get this it anywhere. Want your only fans? Get your only fans. Freedom to do that. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Oh my speaking goodness, of so speaking hot. of new stuff this week, um, Corel, how's the 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 j- new job this week? Yes, Corel is no longer unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, ah. Thank you, booze. So it's, Money. it's day three, or I guess when we recorded this, it's day three of the job. And it's interesting, like, it, you forget having a nine to five, whatever the hours you work. Mm-hmm. There's a rhythm and a grind to it almost. And I've fallen out of that grind <laughs> the last uh-uh. whatever, seven months that I've been unemployed. So it's just like getting back in that rhythm again. And I'm tired, and I'm like, "Woo! I can't take like a midday nap or anything, you know? Yeah. Just little mm. stuff like that." That I'm like, "Okay, I'm out of I'm out of work shape a little bit. Not just my mental is still there, but like the physical, just waking up earlier and getting in, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna take a couple of weeks for me to get back in that rhythm. But no, I'm so grateful, so blessed to to be able to get a job and all that stuff. So it, that that stress. So October's been lit for me. I got married and I got a new job, like. I'm good. I'm she good. Got a, she got a husband She's, and a job. Come on now. God is come good. On. God, God is, good. is good all the time. All the time. Yes, Lord. God. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Don't let me shout Look, up in like, here. <laughs> She's like, Chris, she like Christmas going to be lit this year. Huh. She's like, no, I got coins. Coin I got still. coins to Look. spare. <laughs> No, no, girl. I said. I just said I was unemployed for like seven, eight months, shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> and had a wedding, right? <laughs> so no, the, y'all ain't getting nothing. Y'all getting some coal. <laughs> congratulations, but congratulations like, to yeah. you, girl. Y'all yeah. might, y'all you, might get you. a holiday card. You might get a holiday card. But you that's about might. it. <laughs> From the Dollar Tree. <laughs> From the Dollar Tree. <laughs> she the one. She the one. She gonna. She gonna be writing out coupons like I owe you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done. Not Cooper. <laughs> I owe you a hug. <laughs> but why I wouldn't do that in real life, though? For real. I'm like, that's actually clever. <laughs> I owe you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, oh my god, that's too funny. Oh. Too funny. But no, thank you. It, it's 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 been interesting. I still keep thinking back to the night before, uh, the night after your wedding, when we all went out to like the gay village in um, uh, in Puerto Vallada, and like we all wanted to turn up so bad, but a lot of us were leaving the next day, so it's just kind of <laughs> yeah. 
and that's the funny thing. We didn't tell that part of the story. So, like, obviously, last week's episode, we were talking about Dewan's question about how did they stay hard and <laughs> sex work and all that, which thank you, community, for responding with your <laughs> responses to that question. <laughs> but what we left out in that whole conversation is we were so happy to go out. The whole week, we're like, we're going out Saturday, do da 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 doing all this. Bitch, we had dinner, had one drink at the sex club, at the strip club, and I had, like, another one. Then all you bitches looked like man i'm tired i'm tired too shit i'm tired too we left we were back at the resort by like 12 30 easily damn <laughs> so i was we so mad the big game i was so mad but, but you know shit, what it was also it was hot as fuck it was so it was hot. hot as hell i mean like we we were kind of the like whole week I don't, yeah and we were like like we got to the restaurant the restaurant was nice or whatever and the, the meal was was really great and you know had interesting conversations there but then by the time we left and we got to like the gay village and got out of the taxi or the uber girl that he hit you and some of the places don't have ac they just open so mm-hmm. like we were literally just looking for any place that had ac at that point because we passed by a and couple of places that were like AC. bumping <laughs> <laughs> right, because some places were just blowing hot ass air, like, <sighs> like that. Mm-hmm. It was. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is gonna be real random. This is gonna be real random and off topic as fuck. Oh lord! But Dewan, this glow on your face right now in this bitch, video, right? but you give me like everything. Oh, really? You looking oh. fine, girl. Seriously. You looking hey, she fine. Got the scruff going. I am here for this lighting. It is everything. That's what I said too when he logged in. I was like, <laughs> yes. Dewan, you're looking cute. Girl, I was like, you got the scruff cute. going. Thank yes, you. come I on, agree. Daddy. Gonna, hold on, let's take a picture. Let's do a screen. Uh, yes. a, a screen. We need to post this from that? the community, girl, because you looking fine. It's some mm-hmm. Korean cosmetics, I, uh, you know. Screenshot it. Where's the screenshot button at? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, oh, like there you wine. go. Oh, that's yes. cute. Thank you, y'all. Yes, honey. <laughs> yes. You better smile uh, for the camera. Okay. Come on, come on, yes. Colgate smile, commercial. Smile, come on, Colgate yeah. commercial. <laughs> come on. <laughs> We're going to share this with the community. Look, we'll put yeah. this up when the episode drops because I do that have a little bit of a glow going because I'm going, I'm going shopping today, girls. I oh, okay, shopping. she said, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready to spend what some you gonna coins. Buy us? It's my last day. What, um, what you going to buy your, 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 your coat on to you here? Heard, <laughs> I, I heard about this thing called a coupon. <laughs> you, know, you can <laughs> give somebody a hug. <laughs> okay, the Don't IOU. Support. Okay, okay. Okay, I see what you did there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but I, I got I got the tips. I got the tips on like um where to go. So I want to like find uh, I wanted to find the neighborhood where you can get all of like the local artisan stuff, not like the mass produced. Cuz I want to get like a couple of right. souvenirs for some folks. Um, you know, but I don't want to get things that are just like you can buy at the airport, you know. So I hear you on that. But look, um, all I know we... is you better not send Fiznick not a damn thing to go on our mantle above this fireplace because he already <laughs> got shit all over the place. I don't need now one more thing in this house. <laughs> don't you do it. Don't do it. Did this. y'all start decorating for um, <laughs> Christmas? Is that what's going on? <laughs> he already know. I, I had to give him permission. November 1st is when he finally gets to start putting stuff up. So he waiting. He okay. waiting. He ready. Okay. That's funny you say that because I, I, Core and I both adore Christmas. I love Christmas, but we finally, so last week, Core's like, well, it's your last week before you start a job. Uh, let's finally clean out the garage. And I'm like, bitch, I was trying to chill on the couch. You know? <laughs> he put your ass to work, and, work. <laughs> and like, and he's like, well, it's still all your boxes from like your Chicago days and this, blah, blah, blah. We get out there. And yes, I still had a lot of just random stuff from Chicago days that I just never unpacked in Dallas, et cetera. He said, get rid of your pre-married life. <laughs> my pre- oh, girl, I had me a little, I had me a little boo-hoo. I was like, oh, this is for my single day. Shit. Oh. <laughs> and that Corey, like, maybe put through the garage. But um, but then we get out there, and he's talking about, oh, all this is your stuff. Bitch, we get out there. This mother effort. <laughs> I love my husband so much. Why well, he has so much Christmas stuff out there that he had forgotten about. Like we had literally oh, wow. boxes upon boxes of Christmas stuff, which I adore. <laughs> but we both looked at each other like, "Damn, wh- what are we doing?" <laughs> like every year, we just continue to buy more Christmas stuff when we had a garage full of it. So I was like, "You know what? We we just gotta do better." Thank you, Laura, for the money for being able to buy this over the years. But we got to do better. <laughs> when we were all in Dallas for that trip in 2016, we came to our place and y'all house was done up Dead. in Christmas stuff. And all over the literally, yard he's bought was more ridiculous. stuff since then. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> See, we have stuff mm-hmm. in the attic, too, nope. of Christmas stuff. <laughs> and it looks gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, because I can hear him yelling at the, 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 the podcast now saying, oh, well, you like it, too. You don't complain when it's up. <laughs> but it's gorgeous when he puts it up. I will say that, honey. It looks adorable. I agree. I got to ask. we got to do better. <laughs> do, does he have a little snowmaker mm-hmm. like the fog machine? Shh. Nope. Shh. He don't need that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know he got a fog machine, so that just I, is up his alley. That's what made me think about it, because he got that fog machine. I was like, oh, I bet you he got a machine that creates fake Girl. snow. I can see Corey uh, having one right now. Don't, nope. Now that you got a job, he. now that you got a job, you why'd you start coming home to new shit like you used to? Probably. Probably. <laughs> see, you know what? <laughs> and I might have to cut this part of the episode out so he don't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord yes, that's what marriage do to you now uh, right you can choose your battles <laughs> uh but before we get too far we always forget to thank our our people that like open the show for us so thank you christina thanks christina, christina <laughs> yes christina lopez she's it. our ride or die she's from the d She's from the D. Damn, come on, Detroit. Hey, hey, come hey, on, that's... Detroit. Uh, uh, uh. What do Detroit? What they do? <laughs> what they do, Detroit? <laughs> and and hey, you know I'm, like... I'm from Michigan, so I'm here for it. <laughs> and Christina is just like she's like just a beautiful girl. She's um, one of the best friends of my sister, and um, she's like uh-huh. a ride or die. She listens to us every single week. She she's like actively hey. like commenting on stuff and sharing stuff. And yeah. you know, I was so I'll grateful when her. she did it because she was like, because she was like, I don't I don't like the sound of my voice. I don't know what I don't know if I should I do the intro. You, it's like, girl, just do the intro. I feel you. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. We gonna put you <laughs> on. Mm-hmm. And exactly. it sounded amazing. So thank, so you. thank you. It did. Yeah. <laughs> Look. I don't like the side of my voice. That's why I don't say nothing bad either. Mm-mm. Ooh. <laughs> I can't now, see, she be, That's see, how much Jarell I don't be popping like my voice. Okay. Jarell be popping them gums oh, be popping on everything. Something. But <laughs> she says she popping them gums on everything but in the bedroom. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. I think Fiznick would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> and I, ooh. <laughs> and I, ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you was... That's why I talk so much because I think my voice is annoying. So when I got something to say, I know I'm irritating people times too with my words and my voice. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, But she be Lord. saying some slick shit. She be saying some slick stuff she here do. on the podcast and in real sure life. So I, could, I was like only I can only for imagine me? what she be saying in the bedroom. She's like, no, I just I guess I save that for everything else but the bedroom. Oh, <laughs> I don't mm. say nothing. I just be my. So my you don't business. like. So you don't. Mind your business. Mm-hmm. I'm not that vocal. Uh, let's see, I'm about to spill too much tea. I be minding my hole. I gotta pick and choose <laughs> my teaisms about my own self some weeks. Because <laughs> I be listening back and I'm like, damn, I said that. I shared that shit. <laughs> Saying all my business. But anyway. Ain't no shame in my game. Look. Uh-huh. But I'm pe- not that vocal either. I'm not like. I'm not one of those people that needs, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, d- come on, d-. no, all that, you're just doing the most. That, like, takes me out of the moment a lot of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Jarrell, I'm just curious. So, is the only sound that, that comes from your bedroom when y'all are getting nasty and it's, like, clapping? It's a pillow. It's a pillow. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this? A pillow and the clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Round of applause. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, this is too I mean, funny. you gotta say something. You gotta say something. Fiznick, I am so sorry. Fiznick, I am so sorry. He probably so red at work right now, like <laughs> oh, what he say, Fiznick? What'd he be saying? We gonna ask Fizz if Fizz be DMing us and telling the tea the real. He be, yeah, he be the spilling the real tea. tea in the DMs. <laughs> he be trying me. He be like, Mm-mm. so what I have said is, this, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I got the receipts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord. I'm here for it. <laughs> but before I cut you off, before all that, I, you were about to say something. I forget what. Oh, <laughs> so tonight, girl. <laughs> okay, so by the time this episode airs, we'll I'll be back home. But tonight, we're going out to the gay village here in Seoul. So <laughs> I'm really curious about this um, because number one, they they don't allow pornography, so it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see like what's on the TV screens <laughs> when I walk in some of these sure. bars. Because <laughs> you know, you walk in and it's usually you know 
you see some stuff. Yeah, some some action. It's right. the round of you applause. Know, to get to get you to get you in the mood, right? <laughs> I don't go to those bars. Where are these bars at? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh, she so it's just Auntie Chardonnay and Auntie, and Auntie Vodka. That's only us. No, like Wait, in so you Seattle, never been those to like, don't exist. They don't exist. You in never Seattle. been to Jack Hammer like, in Chicago? <laughs> you've been to Jack Hammer. That's in been Chicago. over a decade. That's been over a but decade. But you've been there. But I barely we don't have remember. To start it. Her. I barely remember. <laughs> I barely remember. The only we thing I do is remember. Yeah, I won't say what I remember. Oh, but yeah. It's so funny. Mark texted me, our friend Mark today, finally listened to the podcast. So thank you, Mark, if you're hearing this about damn time. Ooh. But B, he goes, I- I'm finally listening to you guys' podcast, and I heard everything on this episode from grits to fisting. Uh, <laughs> not gr- <laughs> that's about, that I'm like, sorry, about girl, right. And you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a compliment so, I mean, to you me. get what you get. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, look, I was like, you're welcome. Look, you, you was hungry you could go and you was hungry. to the other. <laughs> right. uh-uh. You was hungry and you was hungry. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> True. True. But my what's goodness. the name of the gay village in Seoul? Oh, my God. So this is what I heard. It's called Homo Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. And, Bye. And, See y'all next week. And the reason for it... <laughs> It's because it's literally a bunch of like gay bars on a back alley on a hill. <laughs> so anybody that go up that hill, you know what the T is. But apparently yeah, they have a have trans to bar. Back next week, uh, okay. they have a bar called him. They have a bar called uh, Her? I think it's called Queer. Right. No, I can't help. Just <laughs> but oh, they have Lord. like they have, they have about four or five bars or whatever and apparently thursday nights they do a drag drag night so um okay so we're gonna check that out and i'll report back put that on ig just let us know how that looks post it on ig oh, okay well it's funny because i just got a text message this morning um, or a messenger message from my friend mike um jefferson who actually lives here and i completely forgot that he he lived here and i've been here for like five days already so he hit me up he's like wait you're in seoul so you said so he ain't like, a real oh, friend shit, completely for- yeah yes this is like we need each other <laughs> <laughs> you co-signed it. I'm out. <laughs> you co-signed it. <laughs> I had nothing to say. <laughs> we're, okay, we go. Oh, this is this is the game we're playing today. We're coming for each other, huh? Okay, let me roll up my sleeves. <laughs> I had absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> He said, oh, so he not, oh, so he not a friend. <laughs> Jarrell be sliding them lines See, in, I swear. Girl, and I know there's a whole bunch of y'all right now doing a rewind. She said, like, I missed that. Huh. We have to rewind what that he said. back. She came for me. She came for me. <laughs> but let me give you the backstory since you want to know. Miss, I don't say anything in the we, bedroom. We already figured it. We already figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but like Mike and I knew each other back in Columbus. I didn't, haven't lived in Columbus in like 15 years. Um, he had moved okay. to Seoul to teach English as a second language, which is the same thing my mom did like a while back. Um, so I had, compl- and you know, it had been, gosh, like 15 years since I had a conversation with him. Maybe like randomly, like maybe eight years ago, might have said like, you know, Merry Christmas or some shit like that or whatever. At any rate, he just reached out to me today and he's like, oh my gosh, you're in, you're in Seoul. Are you still here? I'd love to meet up. And so we're going to meet up tonight. He's working until about eight o'clock. So we're going to meet up. And um, he asked, what are we doing? I said, oh, we're going to Homo Hill. He said, oh, Homo Hill, laugh out loud. I'll have to give you the tea about that. So okay, I'm on, well, I'm on pins and needles. all the tea. Yeah. Right, I, I want to know, know what it is. Because like the we last time I was here. next week on Homo Hill. That's yes. And then hopefully Jeff, there might be some Jeff. videos and some photographs. <laughs> That I could share. Exactly. And may, hopefully I won't get arrested by the South Korean police. <laughs> and hopefully oh. you see Tank there. Y'all I was heard, just about uh, to say, right? <clears throat> huh, Maybe that's about Tank this let's week. Let's get into it. <laughs> Lord Jesus. That's, that's, get into about, it. that's the real tea. <laughs> okay. First off, I thought the story, like, the conversation was hilarious as fuck. Oh, f- okay. Because Tank is funny. Tank is hilarious. Wait, he is, he is funny all, and fine, first of all. Tank oh, girl. is so fine. Let's give him, let's give him the backstory so they understand what so, this is. 
I want the back and the front story. So, well, look, uh, go okay. ahead. <laughs> um, so a while ago, I, f- I can't remember how many years ago, he first originally made a comment saying that he liked his ass played with. Or he liked yes. his whole play with. Yes. Um, kind of like for right. foreplay. And people are like, ooh, that's kind of, are, are you gay? You know, what's, you know, what's going on back there, you know? <laughs> Which I don't think you have to be gay if you get your whole play with. That's right, I agree. Mm-hmm. But again, this is the conversation like, we're like a, a long from, yeah. time ago. Yeah, before people got to where they are now <laughs> about being Facts. comfortable. About that is true. Anal, like straight people in anal play. Which is surprising how many people, straight people I know, like anal play. Because it feels good. I, They're so positive with it, though. <clears throat> Let me tell you. That is true. I can't tell you how many girlfriends I know that be like, ooh, yeah, girl. I asked him <laughs> to do it in the booty, and he was like, saying, what? You know? And then I also got a couple of straight friends, straight guy friends, uh-huh. who like to, you know, not receive it, but they like to have sex with their girlfriends annually. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, we've come, we've come away. But again, this is all after this conversation Tank originally had so many right. years ago. So fast forward to um, October 21st, 2019, (laughs) okay? He's having this conversation with um, a group of other ladies, and he makes- On Angelie on lip service. uh, Yeah, Angelie lip service, and he makes the comment saying that, like, if you suck dick less than twice, uh, no more than two times, that doesn't make you gay. And- Now let that sink in for just a second. And the conversation, yeah, he was just like, maybe, maybe you try it, maybe you try it, and you didn't like it, and you're like, okay, let me try it one more time, and uh, I didn't like the taste. Okay, I'm moving on. It's not for me, you know. And I was <laughs> just said, like, what's that the taste? <laughs> okay, but like, what I don't uh, that that first of all, that logic of like, you tried it and then you didn't like, you didn't, and then you weren't sure, and then you tried it again to see if you to really validate whether you liked it or not, like. Well, I guarantee Come what happened now. was what had happened was that first dick was like <laughs> probably a little smaller, you know, it wasn't. Uh, but then he had seen a good size one. He was like, "Ooh, that's intriguing. Mm. Let me, let me, let me try it." Again. <laughs> let me see if there's a difference. But then it was too big, or it was, it was like, a fresh, like, or it wasn't fresh. It was a fresh, you know. And he was like, "Ooh, this sounds, yeah. this smells a little, yeah. a little yesterday-ish." So you know, but I'm, yeah. I, all I know is third time's a charm. So I'm willing to be the third time. Thank you, Tank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understood the logic. <clears throat> I understood the logic because I, I can't do that with food. Do. I do that with food. I do that with food. Like, for real. <laughs> like It's true. I do it with food. I'll try something once and I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, like the first bite, I'm like, mm, okay, this might taste okay. And then you're like, Mm-mm, this is spoiled. Not I don't like this. Effects. You know, you ever like, you like, like for like with milk, you know, like where the milk is like kind of right by the expiration date and you pour a glass uh-huh. and you take a sip and you'll be like, no, this still tastes good. Let me try another sip. No, that's spoiled. Mm-mm. I do. I've done that sometimes. Now I have not done that with dick. That. <laughs> I have not done that with dick. <laughs> Wait, you never gone back twice and been like, "Damn, I was right the first time." <laughs> no, the second time, yeah, I've been like, "Oh yeah," the second time, I don't like yeah. it. Mm-hmm, yeah, I definitely don't <laughs> like it, and I throw it away. So it ma- it makes sense. I mean, huh. I, I get I, it. I'm on board with drill. It. it made sense to me too. It makes sense. <laughs> Maybe because take is fine. I don't, I don't know, but. <laughs> Duan, didn't you say something a while ago say that you like to try things at least once? I'm pretty sure I've heard you say that you like to try that you would try things at least once. Um, I I don't disagree with that conceptually. <laughs> I'm just thinking as a straight man, how do you get around the logistics of trying to do it twice as a straight man? You're like, on Tuesday, I'm gonna try this dick. And then this, this, I wasn't really, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how that felt. So I'm going to, on Thursday, I'm going to go back and get some more dick. I mean, come on now. <laughs> the, just the logistics involved. That's premeditated. That's premeditated. Oh, that's at the same time. Right I there. will say this. I will say this. So I identify as a gay man. Okay. But when I was single, I still would sometimes sleep with a woman. And I find women sexy. I, I, like I get, I, I get being, I get being like, but I don't say I'm bisexual because I don't think I just can't. I wouldn't date a woman. Right. But mm-hmm. I, I, I understand being caught up in someone and just being sexually uh, arised of what the situation is, where you're just like, let's go for it. You know, let's just live. Let's live inside each other. 
I'm here mm. for it. And here's a cool <laughs> thing about it, honestly. Here's like, because uh, I'm assuming, and just based on what he said, that he's a straight man. And the cool thing is like, after people are up in this hoopla about what he said and everything, he got back on IG and said, I said what I said. Y'all need to stop being so homophobic. Yeah. Like, it yeah. is what it is. Let people be who they want to be. If they want to yeah. suck dick, let them suck dick. Who cares? Like, right. why are you coming at me with all this? That shows stuff about yourself, not me. Yeah. And I was all the way here for that explanation. I was like, thank you, Tank, because especially in the POC cultures, mm-hmm. yeah. it is still a huge thing to be a gay person or bisexual person or anything in the LGBTQIA male, plus community. Specifically male. Specifically, specifically male. Specifically males, mm-hmm. for sure, have this stigma that uh, this toxic masculinity that's still out there, we talk about that a lot, mm-hmm. that anything that deals with another dude, emotionally, sexually, anything, it just turns into this bigger thing than it needs to be. Yeah. And they just feel like, oh, if I agree with Tank, then that means I must be gay. Or, uh, huh, huh. Mm-hmm. It's just calm all that down. Like, if you don't want to suck a dick, don't suck a dick. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. You know? It's almost like it's almost like it's almost like black women can be bisexual, but black men can't be bisexual. Right. You're either gay exactly. or straight, and it's like, how can both not exist? Like, why is it okay for the for one and not the other? Exactly. And that's something that's still toxic in our community. And even in that video that came out, you still hear the girls, the black women yep. in that video being like, no, he gay. No, yep, he gay. Exactly. Like, I don't care. Like, if he doing that, he gay. And I'm just like... And then, okay, so say if he is, like, on the spectrum. Everyone's on the spectrum. Why does it matter? Say he's bisexual. Is it still that bad? Like, that's the weird thing. Like, the yeah. reaction shows that I would never be with a man that had any relationship with another man. Even if he was a good human being, he might have the mo- Like, he might check up everything on your list. But by your reaction, just because he's had sex or sucked a dick once or twice, as Tank said, and doesn't <laughs> identify... <twice. laughs> And does, right, you know, it's about that third time. You're gay. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> but like, like you always hear stories about people experimenting in college and all this stuff, and you find that out. And he's being truthful about his past. Now he's suddenly a horrible human being. He's disgusting. This like that's the part of the whole community that we still need to get over, mm-hmm. and that I'm tired of dealing with, tired of talking about, tired of you demeaning bisexual and gay especially as a male <laughs> because you don't see that same disgust when, when it women comes to are doing black it. women having threesomes with other women and this and that that mm-hmm. same disgust that they spit out is not there anymore yeah or is not there as much yeah, there's definitely a double standard specifically in the like the black male or the black community as it relates to like male and female roles like somehow it's completely acceptable for black men to cheat on their girlfriends boyfriends whatever you know girlfriends um you know like just treat them like dirt but the woman's supposed to be kind of like the madonna like oh the, if they ever cheated on the man once then it's kind of like you're you're thrown out they're trash mm-hmm. you know he doesn't want to be with you but they could cheat on you like 16 times have all kinds of like baby mamas on you or whatever and you just continue to take them back and then on the flip side it's like oh a woman a black woman can have sexual encounters with another woman and that not affect her sexuality at all um unless at she all. claims it and owns it but if a black man has any kind of like sexual um encounter or whatever or anything that seems like a sexual preference towards a man, even if his sexual identity um, or sexual true sexual preference is for women, he's automatically labeled as gay. And that's and coming like from these double ba- standards. both men and women. Right. Like like right. Jarrell said, like their reaction literally in that moment was like, oh, that dude gay. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, no, hold all that. Like, come on, time the F out. Which I'm glad they were having these conversations, honestly, because especially someone like Angela Yee, Angela Yee's a big figure in the community. And she's visible. And that's what I do enjoy about her podcast because she is talking about these kind of, especially because hers is kind of more sexual, a more sexual podcast. But she's having these tough conversations. And I'm glad she has someone on there like a tank who yeah. does not care about having these. Stuff. He's like, okay, I'm going to say mm-hmm. what I said. It is what it is. And right. I'm going to stand my ground on it because there's show, it's showing something wrong with you, not, whoops, as I hit the mic, something wrong with you, not me. I'm fine. I'm fine with gays, straights, mm-hmm. all in between. It's y'all that still have these issues. You need to work out your issues before you come attack me. Part of the problem with, um, part of the problem with shame or the power with shame is people being silent. 
So like people feel these things or they have these experiences and because it's not the norm, they have shame attached to it and other people shame you. And when you have people that break out like um, Dwayne Wade with, you know, and Gabriel, Gabrielle Union with their son. Right. And they're am I getting that right? Yeah. With their son, Mm -hmm. who's 10 years old and gay. Right. You know, like coming out and like really saying, I believe in my son. I love my son. However, he chooses to express himself. It's it's okay with me. Mm -hmm. And I love him regardless. And I'm going to support him and seeing a message of a a man who, you know, like Dwayne Wade, you know, being able to stand in his truth in that way and say, forget about, you know, what you know, the world is telling me I'm supposed to feel this is my son and I love him. That's a powerful message. And conversely, with Tank coming out and saying this about like his ideals of like, oh. now granted, the the, <laughs> the logic of like the number of licks that it takes to get to the <laughs> pop is a little, right. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very and subjective. It was like a lighthearted moment way. too, but yeah. <laughs> but it's, but to your He's point, like a Carole, one, it's so, a two, a three. <laughs> crunch <laughs> but <laughs> but like it's so powerful to have those kinds of conversations people to come out and just like say i said what i said or i had this experience and that does not define me i define me you don't get to define me and and tell me what i am i know what i am and a, an experience whether it's sexual or otherwise does not define how i identify with myself or my my preference and i think those messages are so liberating for people that are struggling with, you know, s- with shame and um, and the idea of, of uh, what is it, self? Um, uh, what's the? I can't think of the term of it. But like, where people don't, yeah, where, where they don't, where they don't like who they are, whatever that term is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But anyway, I, I say all that to say that it's great to have like these kinds of conversations happen because it makes people feel like they can be much more truthful about who they are, what they like, and what's important to them, especially. In- communities that need to hear it yeah and like to me i i think it's important that we have to remember that like you also don't know what you don't know you know so like part of living is about experiencing things as you guys talked about when we were talking about traveling and trying new things okay (laughs) that can be said for other things in life as well you know and there's nothing wrong with Figuring out what works for you, what don't work for you, you know, what you like and what you don't like. And some people might be open to, you know, having more sexual fluidity in their life and some people aren't, you know. And there's no shame if you do and there's no shame if you don't. And we shouldn't be placing judgment on that. Uh, One thing I do want to point out, though, and I just want to make sure that I'm clear on this. This isn't an issue just in the black community. This is an issue throughout the whole spectrum. And all Mm -hmm. races, because I know other people in different cultures and non POC people who feel the same way. Oh my God, this, this guy did something with, with another guy. He must be gay. And it's like, no, that's not how that works. Like if you're gay, you are gay. <laughs> you don't do something <laughs> like, to become like gay. Eating Chinese like, food right. and being like, oh, since he ate Chinese food, he must be Chinese. Come on now. Yeah, that's not how that huh, works. Exactly. That's not how it works. You know. I'm glad, so, you, I'm glad you said that. Say that again. Yeah. <laughs> so you can try. Uh, you can try things, and it doesn't change who you are, um, mm-hmm. and it doesn't make you any less than either. So nope. You know, I hope people take away from this to continue to, you know, try new things. I hope this actually encourages more straight men to try different things as well, to be honest. Yes. Um, Try it all. Some of the close, some of my closest straight friends that I, that I'm like, I've known for a while, I've known that they've also experimented with other people too. And they're happily married now with kids and all the rest of that stuff, but they tried it and they're like, you know, it wasn't for me, you know? And I'm Mm -hmm. like, good for you, buddy. Like, I cool you know yeah so i mean live your life I y'all agree. live your life live without your life. fear and no one else's boxes i'm still stuck on the logistics of how do you try one <laughs> <laughs> and then go and then figure out that i'm gonna try this again like are you in like a like a threesome and you know you try this well, one it could have been over time too like, mm-hmm. it could have been like one of the things <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how was just, how how was he like? Mm, <laughs> I just, Lord help you. I can't. So you're stuck on the number. Yes. 
how, so like I'm how much how logistics. much of the penis experience did you get to? How did you get just the tip? Did you right. get all is it of just them? Did you get the, did you get like the, the finish and surprise afterwards too? You know, right. like right. Did how you much? To, right. <laughs> did you do the banana test? <laughs> did you, you get know, the, did you get the unwanted down. children? Did you get the unwanted children that you know came with it at the like, end? Did you, right. did you sure. like play with the balls? Did you fondle the ball? <laughs> like did you stroke <laughs> it a little bit? Like we want the details, Tank. Right. Like give us details. Yes, please. <laughs> Since, you know, since you're coming out with every, you coming clean we with evidence. everything. We want receipts, Tank. Tank, we yes. want receipts. Yes. <laughs> you know they we want to see, damn Look, it. you know they signed yes. the NDA. <laughs> <laughs> he made sure they did. Mm-mm-mm. Was he sing, like, Was he singing while he was doing it too? Like, what song did you sing, Tank? Like, mm-hmm. I want to know. I like the music. <laughs> did you pursue him or did he pursue you? Ooh, that's a valid question. Valid question. Was it like backstage at a concert? Like, we, we need receipts. We just need details. <laughs> it was probably a groupie and her husband. I can see that being. Mm-hmm. I can see that happening. I can see a threesome happening. Mm-hmm. Like, you have a threesome he happening. Said, like, maybe oh, I'm gonna try I deserve this. to suck some dick. <laughs> 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 he said, please don't go. <laughs> oh, we're going to leave Tank alone. But Tank, thank you for being an ally, though. Honestly, yes, like we're, we're joking around, but thank you for being an ally and putting these people in their place because they need to be put in their place. So, uh, so maybe that actually probably is a good segue into our favorite segment because we got a good segment here tonight or a good question I sh- uh, should say. So, what is it? Ask, Ask your, your aunties. aunties. <laughs> Oh, by the way, the music is lit. I heard it. Ow! Also, yeah. oh, Dewan finally uh, caught up to the music. Oh, fi- yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> literally, like for like episodes. months. <laughs> for months, Dewan was like, oh, we need, like, uh, Ask Your Auntie music. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. Finally get to it. Then he go, where's the Ask Your Auntie music? I'm like, bitch, it's been in, like, it's the last there. three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, somebody hasn't been listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm all caught up, girl. I have 14 hours on that flight, so I got all caught up. I know that's right. <laughs> download it. I download it, and then I and then I I listen to it. So it yes, counts. <laughs> and, and community members subscribe and download the episodes, please, and share. But definitely download physically download it to your your phones or wherever you listen to. That way, we could continue to see the numbers in our data. So side note there. But anyway, back to ask your aunties. What's the question for this week? Who got it? You got all it, right. Dewan. Oh, Jarrell, you got it? So the question is, why is being masked slash straight acting better than being femme slash gay acting seen as better when dating? Mm. I don't think it is, but I get the, where the question comes from because you see it in the community. I personally don't see it. I'm like, be you. Like, I think the sexiest thing a dude could be is being them. Like, mm-hmm. just Just authenticity is so awesome and the ability to grow within your authenticity is even sexier honestly (laughs) like even if like you're struggling and things like that at a certain point in your life being able to grow in that authenticity and being a nicer kinder human being oh panties wet (laughs) so (laughs) i i I know in the community we had those stigmas uh of it has to be a certain body type and you can't act to this and you can't have glitter falling out your purse and this and that but it's just like, ugh, we fight our entire lives to come out of the closet and be ourselves. And then we get into a community that continues to tell us we're not enough still. And that bothers the crap out of me. So be you. You will literally attract someone that loves you just for you. It's literally what I could say to that. It's going to be, it might be tough along the way. I get it. And we all have like body issues and things just because of the by dysmorphia that they place on a lot of people. But I guarantee you, the second you just try to drop that and live for yourself and, you know, not for others, that's literally the second someone's going to be like, I like you for exactly who you are, femme, mask, and in between. So mm-hmm. it sucks, though, that we got to fight that continually in our community, though. What do you think, Dewan? I feel like... um we just have not evolved yet as a culture um, to the place where, especially if you're dating, to the place where you can you can feel like your authentic expression is appreciated. I feel like there's so many 
you know, with all these different kind of labels that are out there, there are so many ways for people to kind of discriminate against you or to kind of like, you know, we had this conversation a while ago about, you know, people putting things in their profiles that says no mask, or, I'm sorry, no femme, no black, no, you know, like, you know, these really offensive things instead of just like, being your profile about who you are and then just ignoring advances from people that you're not into, you know? So I feel like we just haven't evolved yet. If I'm thinking about the question, like, why is it seen as better? Um, I think we haven't evolved yet out of like what truly we value as um, qualities in each other. And we still place these archaic ideas of masculinity as kind of like the what's sexually attractive for a man. And I think once we get get to a place where we can dispel a lot of those kind of myths and start to really see like voices from like I think about like um, JVN, you know, or Billy Porter, who are openly, willingly and um, unapologetically um, blurring the lines More between feminine. masculinity yeah. and feminine, right? Um, and they're just living in the truth. It it helps to normalize um, that someone's version of what masculinity is is not the only thing that can be seen as sex sexy or attractive. Sexy, yeah, yeah. But I feel like just, we haven't evolved and yet. Things, yeah, and it's it's a struggle. And to your point, Carol, I think we just need to encourage each other as you know, just people, regardless of what how you identify. We just need to encourage each other to be your authentic self and seek authentic interactions with other people. And however that, that comes out. Now, if you just hooking up, you know, you hook up with whoever you want to hook up with, but like in terms of meaningful relationships, if you seek authenticity and look for that in, in potential partners and check yourself, because sometimes we want people to to accept us, but then we turn right back around and, and we are not as willing to accept other people for who they are. You You're know, right so on that one. So I feel like once we evolve to that place, that's that's where we're at. I will say that first off, I encourage everyone to be their most authentic self. Be you, live your best life, because you only got one life, and it isn't someone else's right to control it or make you be anything be anything other than who you are. My question for you guys is, what do you say to those gay men who say, well, if I wanted to date a woman, then I would date a woman. That's why I'm not into femme men. What do you what do you feel about statements like that? Um, If that like last time I checked, that dude wasn't a woman like that's uh, that's ignorant and stupid Mm -hmm. and is literally the foundation of a lot of the toxic masculinity that we preach mm-hmm. about week in, week out, honestly. And to me, that shows there's something inside them still that feels whatever society put on them, I have to act a certain way. I have to speak a certain way. I have to date a certain way. And they're putting their own selves in a, a box. And I think there was a, I think a few episodes ago, Dewan had made, mentioned on that MTV show how they took a test and the guy that he was going to be, or technically, I guess, paired with was someone that on the outside, he was like, whoa, that's not what I think I should mm-hmm. be dating. And a lot of times you got to get out of your way, like get out. Of, like it's just this weird toxic thing that we still hold on. And trust me, like I still go through it with myself sometimes where I'm like, Oh, I don't look the body type that I want or the, you know, and it's just like, okay, why do I want to look that way? Like, is it because I want to feel healthy and want to live a long life and things like that? Or is it because I feel society's telling me I need to look that way. And sometimes I got to check myself on that, you know, but, um, to have someone just say, Oh, if I want to date a, woman i date a woman i don't need your fucking opinion get out my face with that bullshit because that's that's just an ignorant Mm -hmm. ass statement like there's ah, it it rubs me the wrong way honestly like i wouldn't even waste my breath really on these people like you know what you just showed me who you are come over i'm good (laughs) so then duan question number three for you is where do you draw the line when it comes to preferences because some people would say that you know well I just don't like to date people who are femme. That's just a preference. I don't have anything against them or anything like that, but that's just not what I'm into. Is that any different than what we're talking about? Um, I honestly feel like um, if some, so to your earlier question about like, what do we do? I think 
like Jarrell said, it's up to us to hold ourselves accountable and hold our friends and network accountable. Like when somebody is saying some something that is a gross generalization or a stereotype about someone else, it's our duty to check them if mm-hmm. they're people that we care about. Because, you know, that's also you, you are a reflection of the company that you keep. So I'll just put it Absolutely. like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And then so your second question about um, if someone says, well, I just don't date, let's call it feminine men, because that's not what I'm attracted to. That's them. And I think, again, it's an it's the idea that if you are grossly generalizing a group of people based off of a single characteristic or whatever, it's okay that you have like, listen, I I don't prefer scallops. It's not that I'm allergic to them. I just don't prefer them. And if I see them on a menu, probably likely not going to order them. But guess what? I do order them from time to time. So, you know, like, and the reason, and not that people are like, you know, meat or scallops, but, you know, but the idea (laughs) of it is, (laughs) but the idea of it is, is that you cannot like something, you know, or not have it as a preference. If you tried. If you try it, if you try it and, you know, to, to totally close yourself off to people that fit in what your idea of that stereotype is and just say, oh, well, I'm not even going to pursue something that doesn't look like this. You could be missing out on your blessing. Just going to mm-hmm. put it that I agree way. with that statement mm-hmm. because we have we all know we all have friends that are very specific on their types and things like that. Mm-hmm. And that's what always goes to my head. I'm like, how did you end up there? Like, mm-hmm. did you try? Did you dabble other people, sizes, cultures, races, et cetera, spectrums? Or did you just determine, oh, that's what I think masculinity is? Yeah. And this, you know, and that's what, and a lot of times I'm like, oh, okay, let me pick and choose my battles of the day. Right. But like, but I bring it up from time to time. I'm like, how did you get so specific on the people that you think you're sexually attracted to? It's weird to me because there's so much out there that I'm like, did you at least dabble and try like we're saying? Or you literally think that's what gay culture is and masculinity is and you pinpoint it in that and haven't even allowed mm-hmm. yourself to see that there's so many other people and personalities and this and that. So I don't know. That's always been my question as personal, well. It's like, how? From a personal experience, I had always dated people ever since I started, you know, dating men i had always dated people that were my age or older and in my mind even when i was 22 i was like dating people that were like you know just my age or older and in my mind i was just like oh you know you know people that are younger than me or even my age are so immature and they're not wanting the same things and i'm a serial monogamous so um i i aspire to be in you know a um in a relationship or serial relationship whatever they call it um but i aspire for that so that's something that's really important for me and for the majority of my dating history had always dated people that were my age or older. And I remember when Adam had hit me up, you know, Adam is 11 years, my junior. And Mm -hmm. the reason why I originally did not respond to him was because he was 11 years, my junior. And I literally, you know, I let it sit in my inbox for a while or whatever. And then like maybe a month later I responded and then we had a really nice conversation. And now five years later, you know, well, we've been exactly. in a relationship for five for five years and his age has absolutely nothing to do with his character, with his qualities, what he brings to a relationship. And I love this man. Exactly. And so if I would have stayed in my preference of like, oh, dating people that I perceive to be more mature, more interested in things that I'm interested in, I would have never allowed myself the joys that I would that I've had for the last five years of being with this man that I love. But at what point but at what point do we. Like, first of all, I just want to say I agree with you guys. You know, like, I think you should be open. For me, I'm a person about what's in the inside. Like, because I know looks fade, all that stuff. So I'm all about characteristics. I want us to connect on a deeper level. Um, So I'm just asking this question because I know I've had these conversations plenty of time with other people who think and the way that I'm asking these questions. And I'm just trying to armor up so I can know how to respond to stuff like this. So I think this is good for myself and other people who are listening who have had these conversations too. So my next question is, at what point do we accept a person's preference? Um, and, and having a preference is okay, but then at the same time, at what point just do we accept, well, maybe someone just isn't into that. Like, 
why do we like why is it okay to push someone to do something they don't want to try at the same time and i don't think i'm pushing people like i just want to understand how you came to that conclusion like, but i, I mean like if someone doesn't want to like that should yeah. also be enough it, you know very well but very i agree well there true. i agree at some point it needs to be making sure that it's not something that that stems from hatred or dislike in a negative way right. of someone and that you're not downing or shaming someone for being someone that you may not be into. Like, I think right, as long right. as people are accepting people for who they are, but just feel like, hey, we just don't connect in that way. I think that's OK. But I think we need to make sure that we continue to you know, when we're having these conversations with people, be like, we're not saying you need to like everything. You don't need to like every crayon in the box, okay? Mm -mm. But you have to acknowledge that they exist, and you have to acknowledge that there is space for each one of them inside that box. You better preach on that today. (laughs) You know? And so I think if we continue to talk like that, I think think people will be actually more, you know, um, upset. Um, accepting of the possibility, okay, you know what? We all are in this shared space. Let's see what right. else can happen in this space versus trying to push someone in something, you know? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all know, like, I've always been a person like, oh, people say, I even want to go on left. Well, you know what? I'm stubborn as fuck. I'm going the fuck right. <laughs> Just because y'all want left, I'm going over <laughs> you here. Know. <laughs> because I can't, because I'm not a follower, you know, I'm a leader, you know, so I'm not doing someone just because someone <laughs> says to do something. And I right. bet you physics over here have been like, I'm going to use this next time we have an argument, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, boo, you can save this for the next time. You can use it as a receipt. Right. I go my own beat. <laughs> I'm the United Nations, though. I like the United Nations, all colors, creeds, <laughs> and cultures. So I, I'm, a, I'm a married man now, but in a prior life. <laughs> <laughs> I like the crayon I do box. Feel like, <laughs> I do feel like, you know, we keep touching, we've talked about this on a lot of different podcasts because there's so much to unpack. And I honestly feel like we as a culture, and I can speak for myself, I don't have the language to really articulate um, fully so that I think other people can understand like this, what I mean by this topic. But uh, when we talk about preferences, I don't think, at least I don't think any one of us are saying you cannot have a preference. Like we all have preferences, you know, you, you, you have a preference in terms of like how you want to the clothes that you buy and the kind of car that you drive and where you want to live. You have these preferences. I think where the the challenge comes in is when people use their their preferences as a crutch to exclude other people. And exactly. no one in any conversation I've ever heard of, um, at least around this topic, has ever said that you have to like you have to like every single person like you you can't have a preference or you can't um you know say that you 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 would not date this person and I, I don't think that's the i don't think that's the intention here i think when when your preference gets in the way of um gosh how do i even say this when your when your preferences creates an environment where people feel excluded um and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to date them or you have to be into them. But if you're outwardly putting your preference out there so that you're excluding people from being able to interact and it with you, it almost demeans them in you, a way. It's like it's it almost a demeaning pe- manner. Regardless of the intention, regardless your intention may be positive, but regardless of your intention, it comes off to other people as an exclusive tactic. Right. Yeah, right. but I mean, there's a fine line because. I mean, you also can't control how the other person feels. Like, I, there's been times when I've turned down someone that I just wasn't into and then be mm-hmm. called a bitch or be called a hater, all the rest of the stuff, because I wasn't into the person. And it's just like, well, how come I'm the bad guy because I'm not into someone? Like, it's very easy to feel that way when when we talk about preferences. That can that umbrella is huge. There's so many things mm-hmm. that fall under to what a preference can be. You know, and and I so feel that's like that why person probably did it because it's happened to them before. Like that's probably a, a bad experience that's coming out onto you, right, wrong, or different. Mm-hmm. But I feel, and we've all been there, honestly. But I think that's unfortunately the emotion that's still within this gay community where we all feel excluded at one point in time because we were in the closet you come out of the closet and then you get into situations where you're still feeling like you're being siloed and demeaned and not seen so it's interesting to hear that that someone's like oh well you probably just only like such and such no that's not the reason i just don't like you and and it's hard to sometimes get that across the people that have probably been hurt 
by the exclusivity sometimes this gay community becomes. And that's why I phrase that's why I asked that question at what point where is that line when it's a preference and what's line where it's like you're being hurtful Ooh. or you're being yeah. ignorant. You know, it's like because mm-hmm. like I mean, like you said, we've all been there where we've had to be like, sorry, not into you, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we've all had that experience too when the person be like, well what's wrong with me? Are you into this? Is this what you like? Oh, you know, I mean it's just like it, I hate that sometimes it feels like there's a lose lose, like there's no yeah. making anyone feel better. And I know for some people, you know, coming out or that 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 feeling of not feeling ex- included in the community pushes people to be more open because they're like, I would never want to do this to someone else. So for there, I'm open myself. Um, some people go that route, but I also feel someone some people go the Jada route, which is they just they yeah. just, they get mad and hateful and hurt and and disrespectful to other people that don't find them attractive. And it's like I like to remind people: guess what? If that person don't like you, there is still someone else that likes you. There's room for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I like to encourage people: don't waste time in a space that's not meant for you. If people are living in a space where you aren't welcome, that's probably a space you don't want to be in because it's an uphill battle. Yeah. That's going to be and it's draining, not your and it's going to be and your exactly. Being? There's just so much work. So go be in a space where you can go and you can let your hair down, kick off your shoes, and relax yes. your feet, kick and you got to worry about down. nobody having <laughs> nothing to hurt. You know, to be, you know, to be hateful or disrespectful towards you. You know, no, like I, I feel agree. like there's also a spectrum as it relates to pre- um, preferences because when you think about it, you know, there are preferences that are perfectly acceptable. Like I prefer. Um, to be in a relationship with a man. That's and and that's just my preference. And there are other people that, you know, can when they're on the spectrum of sexuality or sexual identity and things like that, you know, that that are a little bit more on the gray side, they can kind of float one way or the other. And, you know, for me, I think long term, I can't imagine being in a long term committed relationship with a woman that I'm also sexually attracted to. You know, but there are also these instances where people get in relationships and then one, the person in the relationship has a gender change and they stay in the relationship with that person and they continue to be attracted to that person. You know, so their their love and their attraction goes deeper than kind of like the, you know, the sexual identity that that person has. So I'm not saying that people need to be that evolved. I think there are certain preferences that are perfectly OK and acceptable. Um, and where that line is, I, I, I guess I draw the line at when a preference is to the point of being um, discriminatory or damaging to other people, other groups of people or, uh, you know, other individuals, you know, but if a preference is I just don't like you, you know, particularly, or I'm just not into you. I don't you, fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's one thing. But I think we'll continue to have this conversation. and it'll It's going to continue yeah. to come up because it seems to come up a lot. And, yeah. and there's so much unpacked. And so whoever sent that question, thank you for sending that question. And just let it be known that if you're more mask, be more mask because it's you. Mm-hmm. If you're more femme, be more femme because it's you. Not because you got to try to be something that you're not. So be you. That's what we really want to preach. And getting on that yeah. journey of being 1000% yourself. And someone will come if that's what you want yeah. honestly like i, I feel so I, yeah, you'll attract that kind i have of energy. one thing i yeah. do have one thing that i want to say uh-huh for those who think being mask or doing things that a lot of straight men tend to do is some type of an eternalized homophobia check yourself because there are still things that i like to do that I, that mostly my straight friends like to do and they make me happy Pizza right. and beer on Sunday watching football. Fuck yes. It's all delicious. goddamn day. Love it. <laughs> well, not, this, Love it. not the last couple, two seasons. I, you know, <laughs> you know, I kind of gave right. up the NFL. But. You know, texting, <laughs> texting with friends about the NBA season starting. Yes. And, you know, who's winning, what squad, what you picking. Fantasy football league. Going to straight bars. Going to a strip club. with You know, like... I love doing all that stuff. I like still kicking it with my guys. And there is nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean I, and I have think any that goes issues back to the myself. stereotypes of what straights and gays are supposed to do and act and all this. And we just got to check it all. Like, why can't people, stop. why can't we like it all? Why can't we like exactly. it all? Why does it have exactly. to be straights do this and gays do this? So for those of y'all who got a problem with gay men who like to kick it with their straight bros on the, 
Who kiss my black boo. ass. <laughs> kiss my boo. Who I check said me what boo. I said. <laughs> There's enough cheeks. Don't worry. There's enough. There's enough really. By the way, Atlanta Housewives is about to start back up again. I'm excited about that. <laughs> There's enough of it. Oh, uh, but okay. Thank you for that question. Continue to send your ask your aunt these questions, by the way. Um, we love you guys sending these in, so continue to do so. Carol, can you can you just like clue us in on this whole douche slash always thing that's going on right now? <laughs> douche slash all oh, oh, the always pads and Yes. And th- well, yeah, and I think we posted it. The Always Company is taking the female symbol off of their packaging, which a nobody knew was even there in the first place. So I don't know why people are up in arms about it. But so a, a transgender man had texted or tweeted Always Brand saying, "Hey, there are still transgender men that have periods." And we just feel like we're not seen and included in a lot of the products out there. And this was recent. This was only like a couple of weeks ago. Always in that short amount of time has turned around and said, hey, we, we hear you. We want you to see, feel seen and visible. And by the way, we're taking off the symbol off of our packaging. But now people have been up an uproar and said, oh, if they're going to take this off the packaging, well, then what else are they going to do in life? Bitch, you didn't even know it was on the packaging. You're still going to get your period. <laughs> go get you a damn tampon and stick it <laughs> where you need to stick it and go about your day. <laughs> Shut up. Like, golly, people. Like, I don't get it. I don't. You don't have to be an uproar of other people wanting to be seen. Like, mm-hmm. that is so mind boggling to me. It that people get you. so upset for something that does not like pertain to you remotely affect them seriously like you're already seen you're already seen they already had the symbol on the packaging for the last 50 60 70 years however long (laughs) always has been out there and now that they're taking out you don't feel seen bitch no you're out of here get out of here (laughs) Uh, like it drives me (laughs) crazy because i'm like that's like the true definition of privilege that you already had a product that was out there for you and now you feel less than because a symbol was taken off the package? Well, that says something about you. But at least there's companies out there that are taking these man, these uh, tweets realistically and seriously and doing things saying, hey, our brand, too, is for you. So that's awesome to me. I love it. And if you don't like I them for it. doing that, there's other brands out there. <laughs> or It really just makes you realize how many things have been genderized like for no I mean, for for in some reasons, but the more that we have now that we have more transsexual intersex awareness, you know, it's awareness because it's always been there. They've always been there. Um, it's opened the door for these companies to really step up to the plate. And I just applaud any company that does kind of like what always did, you know, which is we hear the concern. We realize that we are contributing to the stigma of what belongs to a woman, what belongs to a man. And that realizing that this product does not, should not be exclusive. It should be inclusive. Right. And if by removing the symbol that defines, you know, feminine products, you know, Quote, as unquote, opposed exactly. to, you know, as opposed to, you know, a hygiene product you know, much more right. inclusive messaging. Um, I think that's just, that's something to, to be applauded. And it doesn't, like your point, it doesn't take away from the functionality of what the product no. actually does. Uh, is Exactly. Like, they're acting like it's the end of the fucking earth. Sorry for the F-bomb there, but sheesh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it drives me nuts. It really does. So, anyway... Um, so I don't know what we're about to call this segment. Maybe it's a slight curiosity, Halloween style. <laughs> yeah. But, um, the would, figured, the would you, know, you rather's <laughs> the would, right. The would you rather's that we just branded curiosity, honestly. <laughs> um, but we figured it's Halloween and when it's Halloween, we got to give a little flavor in the podcast. So we, we figured we'd do a couple, uh, verses actually. So, you know, tops bottoms versus all this good stuff yes, but, uh, come on come on with so, the spectrum <laughs> so we, i think i sent this list to you guys but um maybe we just each kind of go down the list and we each state whatever and then state what we want from it so i'll go first okay good and plenty versus twizzlers which one are you gonna pick twizzlers i don't know which one are, which one is good and plenty Remember, it's the purple box with like. 
<laughs> just a little that. purple box with a uh, white and black. They're almost like like they're a type of licorice candy, licorice. but they're like the smaller. Oh no, Twizzler! Mm-hmm. I know. What <laughs> yeah, they're like Mike, they're like really nasty Mike and Ike. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm actually gonna go with good and plenty. I don't like Twizzlers at all. I like good and plenty because it's at least a black licorice flavor. Because she can't swallow it whole. That's too much. That's oh. why she don't like. It. Oh. Okay, no, nah, don't. Hey, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, said, test don't, game, don't, don't test my game, bitch. Don't test right. Don't <laughs> test my game. He said, "Corey, Corey." <laughs> I'm about to Come say, on, Lebanese. Don't, don't try me, boo. <laughs> like, and it don't take two tries. <laughs> uh, it's showing up. It's like, don't let me. Bo- okay, now don't let me get back out here on the court. <laughs> Corel, you don't like you don't like Twizzlers. Does that mean that you like no. the, the red ropes? Like that alternative? Like no, the I don't ones? even really care for that. I don't like that flavor. Oh. I, like oh. Twizzler, if it was like the black twizz- Twizzlers, I would probably go for the black twizz- Twizzlers. Ooh. I like black licorice flavor. Like I like the black oh. jelly bean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you probably like in the, the one percentile. Look. To clarify, though, <laughs> I have to I have to be very specific with these Twizzlers. I like the pull Twizzlers, the ones where you can pull apart. I don't okay. like the ones that, like the old school ones, where you can slap somebody with them and be like, "Bitch, what the fuck?" No, <laughs> I like to have mine be the pull ones. Mm-hmm. Very specific. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so Milky Way or Snickers? Snickers, Snickers. all day. Snickers, I all agree. Day. Milky Way is like always the, the ones that stay in like the bag, like your mm-hmm. Halloween bag or the jar or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I eat, I eat me some Milky Ways, too. But I like Do Snickers. You? I like the crunch that come with Snickers, but I like Same how here. Milky Ways are smooth. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like the nougat better in Snickers than Milky Ways, too. Yeah. I like things. I don't like things that don't have, like, a mouth fill. Like, you know, like, you bite into a Milky Way, and it's, like, one note. Whereas you bite into a Snickers, you got, you know, all different kinds of, like, textures. I love that. I hear you on that. Okay, so Twix versus Kit Kat. Ooh, what would you do tough. for a mm, mm, mm. a cl- <laughs> bitch? <laughs> that's a Klondike bar. <laughs> I know, well, that's I a mean, Twix you know, or Kit Kat. That's what I did. That's why I did the mm, 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 fill in the blank. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you could you could sing the Kit Kat jingle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't remember it, girl. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Break like, me off a know. piece of that Kit Kat bar. Oh, that's right. Oh, see, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I'm going with Kit Kat. Over Twix. Um, yeah, I think I'll have to go with. Uh, I think I'm going with the Twix. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm going with I Twix. I'm too. going with the Twix. Kit Kats yeah. are or like oh, wow. waxy. They're, like their chocolate is like waxy. Yeah, and then they have yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> and then they have the like wafer. that like papery kind of like wafer on the inside. Yeah. That's just like you bite. You just mm. eating paper. Oh, it's delicious. Nah. <laughs> i'm not the only one oh. on the other side of the world <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see here candy corn or tussie rolls candy corn candy corn all day for me all too. day i love me some candy can i do one space why he said you can keep just... both of them <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna lean into my preference right now. <laughs> I can throw them both away. <laughs> throw them both away. I can't. I, I mean, can't. honestly, if I had you to got, pick between the two, it would one. have to be a tootsie roll. Tootsie roll. Okay. Let's yeah, have to that be a tootsie, tootsie roll. roll. I could only eat like okay. two or three of them though, because it's it's so rich. And like you gotta get like the fresh candy corn and the fresh tootsie roll. The second they kind of go stale, like, yeah. like that's like a feeling. Ooh, getting yeah, the candy out. corn, and then you like bite into it, and it just like breaks. There's yeah. nothing worse than eating a stale tootsie roll. Like you feel like your oh, teeth about to fall out. You be- like in the cartoons when they bite something and all their teeth fall out. It's the there worst. Is nothing worse than eating a piece of candy that's supposed to be soft and that happens. Right. Like, oh, oh no. I agree. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Butterfingers or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? Ooh, oh, this is a tough that's one. That's the hard one. Uh, I, oh, I think I'm going to go with Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Same. Ooh, Same. But I do like a Butterfingers. I really too, like Butterfingers because like, <laughs> it's fact, got that crunch fun to fact it. Of 2019, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups were the num- is the number one candy in America. I believe it. 
Um, but I'm going with my Butterfingers. I love, I don't know what it is about a Butterfinger, but I love me a Butterfinger. So, I feel like good. just a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, I mean, there's already so much like chocolate and peanut butter stuff out there that I just love the flavor of a, a Butterfinger a little bit more. For the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, did you have them when they put the Reese's Pieces in the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? Those were Bitch. flame. Bitch. The, nope. Oh. Nope. Ooh, Y'all can keep them. Those Y'all are can so keep them. Hell good. You. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a purist. You don't need to, like... But the one has a texture for you. Why does everything have a, to be extra? My check. Um, She's a what? <laughs> purist. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> since when? Since when? Look, okay, look. Mm. Right, I'm about to get kicked out of Korea. about to get kicked out of Korea for looking at porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, purist. <laughs> I did not say I was wholesome. <laughs> I did not say I was wholesome. <laughs> oh, bitch. But, but like, you, I, like, I think you would like I, the Reese's peanut butter cup with the pieces because no. it gives you the texture element in it too. No, I don't. It don't need it. She no, said that's too much in it. my mouth. I don't. I can't do it. <laughs> they, they call. They don't call me Auntie Chardonnay for you know for liking a whole bunch of extra. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, now there we go. I'm mad there at it. Okay. All right, uh, sweetest fish or Sour Patch Kids? Ooh, both. Uh, <laughs> fuck, that's so hard. I love Sour Patch sweetest. Kids. I think I love but, me oh, some sweetest. Both. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can just fuck. taste both of them right now. Right? Oh, oh fuck. I love me some sour patch kids. Yeah, I, love I can me some choose. I, honestly, oh. I cannot choose because literally both of those are my movie candies. Like, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Like, mm. I love them both. I love them Oof. both. So and even the sour patch my, watermelon ones, too. Ooh, bitch. Those were flame. I love the watermelon Oof. ones. Mm hmm. <laughs> they make some good ass candy. Go ahead, whoever makes that. <laughs> For real. I think if I had to choose, if I had to choose, I think I would go with the sweetest fish. Ooh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. If Interesting. Choose, okay. Just because, you know, I'm, it's classic, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, you're pure too? Okay. Yeah, I'm pure too now. I'm a pure too. <laughs> <laughs> so we all just claiming that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's my slogan going into my 2020s. <laughs> <laughs> That's our slogan. Yes. Pure yeah, in 2020. <laughs> uh, you going with Sour Patch DeWan? Sour Patch, 100%. Yeah. I love that, like, soury, sweet kind of like, and they're like tiny. So, like, you get yeah. like a good, like, texture. I think with Sweetest Fish, they're like big and gummy, you know, whereas the Sour Patch are like small. So, you, when you're chewing, you get like really good mouthfeel. Hold on. They're not that much different in size. They're not that much different in they're size. They're not that drastically different, no. I mean, the sweetest fish are like two inches. No. Uh, he might be. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're about, about two inches. They're inch about an inch, an inch, and in, 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 uh, like three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If okay, you just see us up here <laughs> with our hands trying to measure damn sweetest fish. <laughs> I know y'all out there in your cars and you're just like, why is it so quiet? That's because Auntie Carell and I both have our fingers like trying to like measure in the air what a, what the size of a sweetest fish is. Oh, Lord. But there's nothing worse. That's another candy. There's nothing worse than a sweetest fish and a Sour Patch Kid that's stale as well. Like, oh, yeah. it just ruins the whole thing. And Sour Patch yeah. now has the big Sour Patch. They're, prob- they're probably the size of sweetest fish. Those, those are, are bomb terrible. too. Woo. Those are terrible. Nope. Those mm-hmm. are those are bomb. I love them. But um, <laughs> okay, let's keep it moving. Uh, M and M's versus Reese's Pieces. Peanut M and M's. Peanut M and M's, hands down. Yeah, hands down. Peanut M and M's might be one of the best candies out there of all time. I yeah. love it might be all time. There. I'm yeah. also that weird person 100%. who like I like to light I like to slightly <laughs> bite them so Me I like to yes. break in half yes. and then you eat a piece of the yes. chocolate and then you pull off the rest of the chocolate and then you eat the nut inside the peanut inside yes. oh yes all day I feel all like day. that's <laughs> called stretching your candy girl okay yes. <laughs> and, 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 and so every time I do like, it your fingers change color yes because <laughs> you hold on to them <laughs> and you gotta suck them off <laughs> to suck the color off. 
I am so glad I am not the only one who does that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And have you ever saved a couple of the peanuts? To yes, gir- I've like- done that too. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nasty the more I talk about it. I've like literally done time. that where I put them in a snack size Ziploc. <laughs> and then I'll tra- take them with me. That's snack number two. Two for one, girl. I love me a good special. Ooh, yes. Seriously. Mm-hmm. This is so true. Uh, but if we're going to say plain Shit. M&M's versus Reese's, I think I still will go with a plain m and like I'm going with Reese's. I'm going with Reese's. If it's against the plain m and I'm going against Reese's. Because yeah. I, I like the peanut butter. Yeah. You know. No, you're right. They both delicious. I do like me them peanut butter m and though. Those are... Mm, huh. mm, mm. <laughs> it might be legit one of the best candies out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Um, Skittles versus Starburst. Oh. Ooh, child, this is hard. This is, this another is hard so one. hard. Oh, uh, uh, let me think. I'm going to say Starburst. I really like Mambas. <laughs> Not Mambas, bitch. Oh, I Mambas. Love me some Mambas. I haven't had Mambas those in a long shit. time. Mamb- Mambas yeah. was my Corey and I just had some in PV. We brought mm-hmm. them to PV. Mambas was the one that had, like, they were like Starburst, but they had the three flavors, uh, right? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. my God. Or, and, and now like the bigger. new ones, they have all four flavors now. Because oh, remember, if first... you got a yellow and an orange, you're like, shit, I need me one more pink. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. But now they have all four flavors together. That's dope. Uh, let me so think. do I Skittles say Starburst. Or Starburst? Skittles or Starburst? I. <sighs> Skittles mm. or Starburst. Wow. God damn. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say <laughs> get, I'm gonna say Starburst. A lot of time on this one, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna say Starburst. I'm gonna say Starburst, and I'm gonna say Starburst because when we were a kid, so we used to fuse our Starburst before they started making the Starburst fuse. So you used to put them together and you'll roll them in your hand, <laughs> and you would take two flavors and you put them together. But you had this big <laughs> dumbass ball of Starburst. Come on, Chef Boyardee. That was the time. That was Innovator. The time. Yep. That's why I'll pick, I'll pick me some Starburst because of that. I think I'm leaning towards Skittles, but it's like 51%, 49%. Like, you can't go wrong with either one. So, Mm-mm. especially the Purple Pack Skittles. Woo! Oh, the Purple Pack Skittles? Oh, those are so flame. Bomb. Every flavor in there. But, right? I also, but I also like the Sour Skittles. I love the Sour, the sour Skittles. Sour Skittles are too. Those but are good. after a while, that, like, the, your, jaw, your tongue yeah, and jaw. Yeah, your jaw Ooh. gets a little, mm-hmm. Yeah. I can only have so many of those after a yeah. I, can, I can't eat a whole bag of Sour Skittles. <laughs> mm-mm. I, mm-mm. I think Starburst, because I feel like they have more, more diff- like, variations that I actually yeah. like versus Skittles. Oh, where are you going, Dewan? What you thinking? No, I'm going to do Starburst. I just feel like every time, like every time I've ever had them and I don't eat candy a lot, but like every time I have either one of those, like I like Starburst because you get to, you get to like unpack each one. So it's like a little, like a little present, you know? And yeah. Mm-hmm. You, and then you get to the next one. You're like, um, then you do that little, like, you know, debate in your head. Should I have a few more or should I just save these for later? So I like that. <laughs> Whereas like with the Skittles, you just open the bag and they just random, they might fall Ooh. out. So you have to eat them all. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. What's oh, the next man. one we got? Oh, um, that's me. It's um, how about Mound or Almond Joy? Keep them both. Oh, Mm-mm. really? I like them. <laughs> I, I like the Almond not a Joy. Coconut fan, no, huh? I'm not a coconut. Oh, Mm-mm. okay, okay. Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> because <laughs> Almond Joy has nuts. Mounds don't. Mounds don't. <laughs> I feel like that's like a little country little, song. Like, nut. <laughs> right. A little Nas. It needs to be mixed up. <laughs> right. I feel like the Almond Joy is great because, like, it has the two little pieces, but it has that one single little almond right on top that just gives it just enough, like, extra, yeah. you know, like, crunch, you know, flavor so that, and texture. Know. Yeah. And... Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this is going to be another. Actually, no, this is going to be easy for me. Jolly Ranchers versus Lifesavers. Jolly Rancher. I'm Jolly Rancher all day. Yeah, yep. I'm Jolly Rancher. <laughs> hmm. Jolly Rancher's a lifesaver. Come in, Jolly Rancher. Oh, because I stay so hard. You could okay, like me for a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on up. <laughs> that laughy taffy. That laughy taffy. Ooh, she's hey. a laughy taffy. That laughy taffy. <laughs> I would say Jolly Ranchers too. I don't really like either one of those, but um, yeah, I would say Jolly Ranchers over Lifesavers. 
I like okay. the apple, okay. the apple Jolly Ranchers. Yes, yeah, those and are the, good. And the purple, not great purple. <laughs> purple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was delicious. Um, what about blow pop versus Tootsie Roll pop? I'm a blow pop. Blow pop. I'm a blow pop. <sighs> yeah. Cause I love that bubble gum act in the middle of there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, mm-hmm. and it's a big piece of bubble gum too. Like it's a little bit of like candy on the outside and big piece of gum. Where it's like Tootsie Roll pop. Like you, you, you have to <laughs> like suck it a lot <laughs> to get to Hold the. On. To but get yeah, to I the remember. Tootsie. Yeah, I remember back in the day though when Tootsie Rolls had the stars on the packet. Yeah, and so you if you got a Tootsie in. Roll with a star, you send them in and you get a free Tootsie Roll. And I'm I heard that like that was a lie. Like I heard that. No, that was I, like I a, got it. I oh, got it. Oh, did you it. get one? Yes, because oh, you had to send oh, in really? a certain amount, and they send they literally sent me like a bundle of tootsie rolls because oh. you had to send in so many of them, and then you didn't get <laughs> one back for each one. I think he was like, you had to send like fifteen or twenty of them in or something like that. And right. then you know how they they used to bundle them in like a bouquet. Uh-huh. They sent me yeah. one of those. Uh-huh. Aww. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm through Tootsie Roll Pops. Yeah. Right. Yes. They actually did it. <laughs> and then, you know, and then she like. had the, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air experience of candy. <laughs> look, hold on. But then, and the, and the candy lady down the street, she used to she used to do it too. So, like, if we had a rapper, she would go and give us. Um, if we had, like, See, that's two how rappers, you know Drill yeah. stayed in, like, the hood the or, like, in a black area. Because <laughs> you had the, the candy, candy lady. The candy lady. <laughs> 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 Not every hood or every place had a candy uh-uh. lady. That's how you know where you do Jarrell stayed at. I know what's up. Yeah, I know what's candy up. Lady. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have a candy, candy lady, lady in the Maple quarter, Heights, Ohio. A quarter, so, uh, quarter juice. Like, yeah, uh, the quarter juice. Oh, the, the round one with the aluminum on top. With the, the little aluminum. barrel. Oh, yep. the little barrels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. you best believe. Oh, that's funny. Oh, Lord. Uh, whose turn is it? Is yours, uh, Dewan? How about um, now and later's or Laffy Taffy's? I'm going Laffy Taffy just because I don't got all day to be sucking on no damn now and later. I know now and later. And sometimes right like, a couple of them, the roof of your mouth will start hurting <laughs> if, if, you, if you had too many of them. You're um, right on that. And then I love sometimes... I love the dad jokes that come on Laffy Taffy. Same here. Yeah. I just had yeah. a Laffy Taffy yes. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> the dad jokes are everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Everything. I, I think I'm going to Laffy Taffy as well. Yeah, me too. But I do love a now later. I haven't had one in a long time. Mm-hmm. But I, ooh, I used to love me a now later. Mm-hmm. The Especially red the watermelon one. one. I love me the watermelon oh, one. Oh, you like the watermelon? Yeah. I didn't like the watermelon as much, but the red one, whatever flavor that is, red. <laughs> red. <laughs> Delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Hot tamales or Mike and Ike's? I like to mix them both together, honestly. Mm-hmm. Wait, so how come I didn't know they were two different things? I thought there was like... The Mike and Ike's are the, the fruit flavored flavors. Ones, and the, the hot rainbow. tamales are just the cinnamon oh, same. Ones. Okay, cinnamon. okay, gotcha. I was like, cinnamon. huh? Um, <laughs> oh, shh. <laughs> I'm going Mike and Ike. I think I'm doing Mike and Ike as well. I'm going hot tamales. I just love that tingling. I I love it too. Only reason why I'm saying Mike and Ike is there's at least like three flavors, three or four flavors. Mm -hmm. After a while, hot tamales, you get halfway through that box. It's one note. Uh It's one note. Yeah, I like that. I like to like. I didn't mind that. But I just I like to sour Mike and Ike. The sour Mike and Ikes are my thing. Mm. I like to like double down on like the flavor. So like I would eat like all the reds. And then I would eat like all the oranges, and then I would save oh, the yellows really? for last. Oh, you like mm-hmm. the yellows last? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the reds. I love lemon. I love lemon, like lemon heads. Mm, yeah, so good. Oh, I mm-hmm. love me some lemon heads. Ooh, some cherry, <laughs> some cherry heads, some grape heads. Ooh. Mm. She loves head. <laughs> Let's call a thing a thing. <laughs> But we know she don't make any noises when she's eating them, though. Call it a sport. Oh. I'm Olympian. <laughs> <laughs> Good Monday oh. morning, y'all. And back to your scheduled programming. <laughs> right. And see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna, we, no. got, we got what, a couple more on here. Okay. So my last one here. My last one here is Junior Men's versus Milk Duds. For me, it's Junior Mints all day. That's Junior my Mints second. All day. That's my second candy movie. Milk Duds. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, milk, I feel like milk, milk ducks is another 100%. one that like break your teeth off. <laughs> I just I feel like you just be chewing forever. I it feel like a camel or something. Like, it kind of <laughs> is. It kind of is. But I just I like I like that flavor combination of like the caramel and the chocolate. And honestly, I never really finished. Usually, I never really finish like the whole box. Like if you go to the movie theater and you get the box of them, I usually eat like half of them. And then that's I'm, because like, you got to chew like, on one piece for so long. <laughs> right. You be sitting there for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> your jaw hurt <laughs> for real like you think you got chocolate bubble gum in your mouth or something like this huh. god damn <laughs> ain't nobody got time for it <laughs> even in a movie not. okay mm. like mm. <laughs> i will say this though you gotta watch and chew milk duds <laughs> look right. i will say this there is nothing more upsetting than buying a box of junior mints and them bitches be squished in the inside <laughs> Oh, I get so they mad up against the I side let, of the cardboard. Oh, for real! And let it be stuck. Oh, I'd be so mad, yo. I'm like, no, that shit was supposed to break up in my mouth when I chew it. Not when I fucked up my junior mint. I have literally, I have literally before gone, gone back to them and been like, somebody sat on this box of junior mints. You I want not. a fresh box of junior mints because this is a glob uh-uh. of chocolate and mint. Now, <laughs> this ain't what I paid for. Mm-mm. Oh, I can't. No, oh, I can't. Do you suck Ooh, the like so little uh, mint cho- the mint juice out of it? Sometimes? Oh, you know I do. You know I do. <laughs> Same here, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we see each other, <laughs> right? <laughs> like my mouth has my mouth has been trained to do that without my hands. I've been... Mm-hmm. Again, the Olympian. Olympian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. I can't stand y'all. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh. What's the last one on here? Go ahead, Dewan. What's the last one? Oh, Crackle Jesus. versus Nestle Crunch. I'm gonna have to go with Nestle Crunch. It's I think I'm gonna have school. to go with Nestle Crunch too. I love you. Yeah, I love me some Nestle Crunch. Yeah, it's just a little more crunchy than a crackle. So it's a Nestle Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. right? the crackle doesn't have <laughs> as many rice pieces in it. Yeah, the Nestle Crunch. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, we do have one more in here. My bad. Oh yeah, Three Musketeers versus Hershey's Bar. Three Musketeers. I'm that weird. Per- I love me a Three Musketeer. Oh, I love me a Three Musketeer. Mm, yeah. I had one earlier too. <laughs> I like how soft it is in my mouth when I'm chewing on it. Good grief! I am the Olympian. And I like a Hershey's Bar <laughs> though too. And the Hershey's I'd Bar. That- Hershey's, I guess. Really. Have you had the Hershey's bar with the Reese's Pieces in it, too? That's bomb as well. Mm-mm. They're putting Reese's Mm-mm. Pieces in everything. Uh, but Three Musketeers versus her. I think I actually might put the Hershey bar, but I love both. I'm a sweet tooth, so I like both. I honestly feel like the Hershey bar of today is not the same Hershey bar like recipe from like, yeah, growing up. Because like, yeah. Every time I've tried it, it feels it tastes waxy. Like It doesn't taste... Like the rich chocolate that it used to be, like back in the day. When like they cut corners on the you formula know? or something. Like you know, like they just it's a little less something in it that just don't give it that yeah. rich. Because I mean, like back in the day, Hershey's was just like it was just a rich chocolate. You know, mm-hmm. like it was everything. I just and, and it, it would melt in your on your fingers. Mm-hmm. Like you would t- hold on to it. You couldn't hold on for too long because it would literally melt in your yeah. hand. But now you can hold on to that all day and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Oh, oh shit! It does nothing for me. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Hold on to it all day. It does nothing. <laughs> oh man! But community, we'll put some of these questions up. We want to know what your favorite candy is for the Halloween season. Happy Halloween! Um, oh, you know what? Y'all should send us your um your hollow pics of your Halloween costume. Please do. We want to see what the community yes. is doing for Halloween and what they want as. And we're gonna post y'all. We're gonna feature y'all. Give y'all some shout outs. You know, yeah. Well, how many of y'all went thottish? That's what we really want to know. Who went yeah. thottish? Yeah, I want to know who went creative. I want something creative. I want to see someone yeah. who thought about something. Who was like original? You know. Now. Mm-hmm. I agree. I know. I, I, we should probably give them. I feel like we should give them like some kind of prize or something. I don't know. But, I'm not yeah, really into your... Halloween. I'm not into Halloween, so I like seeing other people get into it because it's just not something I care about. Again, that's just also me growing up in church and being like, that's the devil's holiday. So I just right. never was into it. I'd love to go trick or treat and get to get free candy as a kid. But even yeah. then, my mom was like, you get three pieces of candy a day. <laughs> like, we were those families that, ha- and April came around and you still had Halloween candy had because candy. he was the candy police. <laughs> and then it like, turned out weird mm-hmm. gray color. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Look, it was in somebody's pillowcase on top of the refrigerator. Right. Like, put up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we definitely will see your pictures. Let us see them. See them cakes, what them cakes do. And uh, oh. I guess we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, thanks, y'all. Y'all have a yes. good week. Happy Halloween. Yeah, be safe out there. <laughs> Check your candy. <laughs> yes, check your candy. Oh, and if you That's see blue true. buckets, make sure you give more in the blue buckets for autism. Bye, y'all.